Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Margaritas with Margarita. It's Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern, kicking off the weekend right with 15 minutes of financial tips. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, producer of the show on the Incandescent Radio Network and Incandescent TV. Thrilled to be here tonight with Rita's guest, wealth psychology expert, author, and coach, Kathleen Burns Kingsbury. She owns BreakingMoneySilence.com, and they're going to talk all about that tonight on Margaritas with Margarita. So I'm going to throw it over to you, Miss Rita. Well, thank you so much, Hope. And Kathleen, I am so happy that you're here with us to talk about Breaking Money Science. So first, I know that you have the podcast, uh, you wrote a book, and I'm so proud to say I read the book. <laughs> and I started and I, I didn't start the revolution, you started the revolution, I joined with you in a revolution. So share with us what breaking money silence is, and the well, origin of it. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much, Rita. And thanks for having me on. I just have to say, I know we're quick, but I had to make a margarita to celebrate uh, being on the show. So, so breaking money silence is about that uncomfortable feeling that many of us get when we're talking about finances. And it could be the dollars and cents, but often it's that uncomfortable feeling around talking about our emotions and money. And so I started to explore breaking money silence or the money talk taboo um, probably about 10 years ago. And the reason I wrote the book and launched the podcast is I realized is there was a disconnect between what I thought... Um, a lot of us wanted to talk about with our financial advisors and, and the conversations we needed to have with people in our lives and what was actually happening. So um, while I don't claim to have a whole roadmap or a, an entire solution on it, I did decide that I was going to start this revolution and really get people breaking the money talk taboo. And I'm so excited that Rita was one of the first to join uh, and uh, really celebrate this revolution with me. Well, thank you so much for that. And then what are some examples that you think both harm advisors and clients if they don't break money silence? I mean, I guess that's two questions, but your book is for consumers and advisors alike. Yes. Yeah. It bridges the gap between the two worlds because often advisors would say to me, Rita, they'd go, well, I want to talk to clients about this, but I don't think they expect me to, or I don't know how to. And then I'd have clients saying to me, or, you know, consumers saying to me, well, my advisor doesn't do that. And I said, well, we got to come together. So an example might be, um, you know, anybody listening in right now, do you know, or would you feel comfortable asking a friend or maybe a sibling their salary? And if so, why is that? Or if not, why isn't that? I know in my family, I grew up and we didn't talk about salaries. I know if my financial advisor who probably does know my salary, right, by all the data, but in talking about salaries sometimes with people, it feels uncomfortable. Um, other examples might be, you know, more classic examples would be older parents not engaging in a conversation about what they hope to do with their estate or how they hope to be taken care of as they get older and really withholding that information or just not feel comfortable sharing it. And sometimes what can happen in families, and I, I know we've talked about this personally, Rita, is that somebody can actually die and then the estate ends up kind of a mess and, and the next generation or the kids are really running around to try to figure it out. And I know nobody intends for that to happen to their children. Um, but often by not talking about money, we don't have these meaningful conversations. Um, we may leave our estates in not great shape. We may not even be truthful with our financial advisors, or we may not advocate for ourselves to ask and get paid what we're worth. Which is, I think, a great segue. Why don't you share with us what you are doing uh, with negotiation? Yeah, yeah, no. So one of the most difficult conversations, at least it had been in my life, and I know it is in a lot of women's life, some men as well, is the idea of negotiating, whether you're negotiating your salary or whether you're negotiating your fees, if you're an entrepreneur like, like myself. And so I decided uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, I, I'm a speaker and a writer and a consultant. And all of a sudden I had a lot of free time because everything shut down. And I said, well, what do I really wanna do? I said, I wanna take this really difficult conversation and start to understand it and start to provide that roadmap. So Breaking Money Silence Learning Lab is an online, um, you can call it an academy or an online course catalog um, that is being built up around these different 
topics that are uncomfortable. And the first topic is negotiation. And I really look at the psychology of negotiation. So how we think and feel about that conversation and how, and I help people get out of their own way. Because a lot of times the skills around negotiation are taught like the hard technical skills, but not the psychology of, psych of, of negotiation. And I think until we get our mindset in the right place to be successful, it's really hard to ask and get paid what you're worth. No, I love that. And you and I talked about this once before, you know, many times they say there's hard skills and then there's soft skills, yeah. hard skills, meaning quant and analysis and soft skills, meaning communication. And I'm like, are you kidding? There's nothing <laughs> soft about this. I'm breaking yeah. out in a sweat. So um, this is your time. It might not be a TED talk, but you're a guest on this podcast. <laughs> so do share um, your perspective about um, the coaching, the training, the presenting and teaching you do about soft skills. Well, and the first thing I will say, Rita, is I agree with you. It's really the hard part. And I also don't use the word soft skills anymore. I talk a lot about the human side of finance or money and emotion connection, um, because I really want to encourage people to know that it isn't soft or hard. Um, it is a really important skill. So it's very important to learn the technical aspects of finance. And it's really just as important, equally important to learn how to communicate about money, how to figure out what you think and feel about money and how to make sure that you are having the healthiest relationship you can. So I do that in a variety of different ways. Um, I am a coach, so I uh, am a trained certified coach. I also am a recovered therapist, don't hold that against me. Um, and so I work with people around their mindsets, around helping them figure out um, where they're sabotaging themselves and then rewrite those scripts in their head in order to be successful. That could be around negotiation, it could be around their business, it could be around success, it could be around you know a bunch of different things. I just love the coaching aspect. I also do a lot of speaking uh, virtually and live keynote workshop, uh, virtual events. And I love educating people. So whether that's talking to financial advisors about the psychology of money or talking um, to a lot of women or women in business or couples about the psychology of money, it doesn't matter. I just want to really get the message out there that this aspect, this hard aspect of finance is important. And then in addition to those two things, I do some consulting for larger firms uh, where I develop content or I coach their teams. And in my free time, I teach uh, college. Uh, I just picked up two teaching engagements at Champlain College, online college, which is a business class. So I'm really committed to breaking money silence like across the industry and across different uh, consumer groups. Thank you for that. Does that answer it your is, question? It, I'm no, losing my ear thing, which is inconvenient, but it happens on a live sometimes. It absolutely does answer my question. And of course, I'm going to tell everyone they need to read the book. They need to listen to the podcast. But if people are like, oh my God, this is so scary. Uh, I don't even know how to break money silence. My spouse and partner is not communicating with me. I'm nervous about negotiating. What are, you know, I just love the number three. What are three tips that you can share with people to get them more comfortable about breaking money silence? Sure, sure. And, and I agree. It's not easy to have these conversations for most of us. I think the first thing I would encourage people to do is really look at their history around money. So it's something called a money mindset. So how you think and feel about money makes up your money mindset and it's your money history. So how do you go about doing that in an easy way? It could be just sitting down. And if you're a journaler or if you're a talker, talk it out with someone who's safe and really start to explore, you know, what did my family teach me about money? Um, what did my mom, what did my dad, what did other significant caregivers, what were the messages that I received from my culture, from my society, and how do all these messages impact my financial health or my financial behaviors now? And so that's a lot of inward um, starting the conversation with yourself, really starting to understand yourself so then you can do step two. Step two is really asking other people, what was your experience growing up around money? Did you and your family talk about money? Um, is that something that is hard or easy for you? You know, I'm doing this exploration. I'm wondering if you've ever thought about it. Uh, the thing about reaching out to somebody else, somebody else to engage in this conversation, I just want to say, you can't be attached to the results. 
So you need to start with someone who's probably going to be open and receptive. So it's really, if it's really hard to talk to your elderly parents, don't start there, start with your best friend or start with your financial advisor. So the, the second tip is to engage in a conversation about your money talk mindset, about these thoughts and beliefs. And then I think the third thing is to look for moments where you could engage in a money conversation. I call these teachable moments. This could be with your kid. This could be with your financial advisor. This could be with your partner. It, it's like when you have a situation, maybe that's not too heated, but where money comes up. Um, for instance, my husband and I are watching a really great next Netflix show called Halston. And it's all about the designer and his rise to fame and then ultimately his demise. And you know, there's a lot of money messages in this particular Netflix series. So that is a teachable moment where I could go, what do you think about the idea that they're just throwing money around like this? So money conversations don't have to be about your relationship with money. Uh, they don't have to be conflictual. They can be simple and they can be things that are just noticing things in the world. Because the more we do that, Rita, the more we fall into more comfort with these conversations. And then we're able to get to the little little bit more tricky ones. No, thank you for that. That is very insightful. So don't start with your parents or somebody you think is going to be don't difficult. Don't start with the hardest person. <laughs> That's like, don't set yourself up for failure, set yourself up for success. And, and I'm just going to throw in one easy one for the really concrete people out there. You can ask somebody in your life, what is your biggest financial success? Even if you think it's a small success and how did that happen? because we focus so much on the negative when it comes to money, like have somebody talk about what's worked with money and, and have a positive dialogue. I think that's really key as well. Well, that makes me feel very, very proud because when I meet a prospect for the first time, I ask them, you know, what are you most proud of? And then I ask them, how are you hoping a financial planner, that could be me, can help you but so all right so i am really um i really did join the revolution you have definitely joined the revolution rita i love your energy and so okay one it's the second to last question what are some myths that people have about breaking money silence hmm. i've written a whole book on it but let me think here on a friday with my margarita about that so a myth around money silence. I think one of the things that people believe and we're told this is that talking about money has to be hard. It has to be uncomfortable. It has to be miserable. And what I have found and what my clients have found and my husband who's along for the ride with me as well is that when you're, the fact is when you start to engage in a money conversation, it starts about money, but what it ends up being is really learning about the other person, their values, their goals, their dreams, what's important to them. And, and dare I say that money conversations can actually be fun. I know people are going to think I'm crazy if you don't think that. So the myth is they have to be hard and miserable. And the truth is they can be really informative. They can help you feel close and they can be fun. I think that's probably the biggest myth. I think the other myth that I just want to address quickly is the idea that somehow men are doing this better than women. That isn't true. That is absolutely not true. No matter how you identify in terms of your gender, I believe each and every one of us struggles at least in a little way, if not a big way in these um, conversations. And it is not about gender. It is much more about the society we live in, the culture we're raised, the family we grew up in, and the opportunity we've had to really engage in these conversations. Wow, that's really insightful. So the last, where can people find you? Where, well, you know what? I'm gonna send people to two places. I'm gonna keep it simple. So I recently redesigned my website. It is breakingmoneysilence.com. There's a theme there, right? Easy to remember, breakingmoneysilence.com. You can sign up for free money talk tips. So you can get a money talk tip every week. Um, you can check out the podcast there, some of the other work that I do with women in business and financial professionals. The other place I'll send you is my negotiation course. If you go to breakingmoneysilence.com backslash negotiation hyphen four hyphen free, and four is F-O-R by the way, um, you will find a free course on the psychology of 
uh, negotiation. It's how to conquer your fear about negotiation. And it's right there. It's free. It can help you understand a little bit more about money psychology and a little bit more uh, about how that impacts your ability to ask and get paid what you're worth. So I hope people will check uh, at least one of those resources out. And on social media, any social media platforms you'd like to what share? What social media, Rita, am I not on? So you can go Twitter <laughs> at KBK Speaks, um, LinkedIn. Uh, my name is long, but it's Kathleen Burns Kingsbury. So it's at Kathleen Burns Kingsbury. Um, I am on Instagram a little at Kathleen Burns Kingsbury. And I have a Facebook page, again, not surprising, at Breaking Money Silence. Well, thank you so much for tuning in with us margaritas with margarita 5 p.m eastern on friday back to you hope thank you ladies cheers. that was fantastic cheers here's to both of you and i love this idea of breaking money silence it's such a taboo in our culture and there's no reason for it right and women especially we need to stand up and take control of our money because that's our power our future and the future of everything the world the planet business our kids so thank you kathleen burns kinsbury there'll you. be links to breaking money silence and all those other fantastic websites that you have out there on the liner notes on margaritacheng.com margaritacheng.tv and her incandescent radio channel margaritachengradio.com so look for that um, on all of those mm -hmm. platforms and and we will talk to you next Friday. Rita, who's our guest next week? Give us a little tip. Oh my goodness. You know what? I need a little prompt or a reminder. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? We're going to put those in the liner notes too. So thank you, ladies. <laughs> have a happy weekend. Um, everybody have a great time. Stay safe. Be well. Bye. Thank you.